Monday, that means it's set up Monday here in the States, a U.S. holiday, President's Day, which may be affecting markets slightly, but probably not. It's crypto, it's 24-7. We had a little bit of a dip last night that has popped right back up to where it was a few hours prior to that. I want to start by look, taking a look at the VIX, which continues to decline. This has an inverse correlation with BTC and ETH and crypto in general, so as the VIX goes back to its natural habitat of 8 to 12, that'll be incredibly bullish for crypto. DXY, US dollar index, as this continues to descend towards 88 or lower, incredibly bullish for BTC, a signal that holding US dollars is not the way for people with a lot of them. And that will push money elsewhere, such as crypto. So all for it, all for it. Let's take a look at some crypto charts now. We have Coinbase versus Bit Bitfinex Premium. So if this is above zero, Bitfinex leads Coinbase. If this is below zero, Coinbase leads Bitfinex. Historically, if we are bullish, then Coinbase leads Bitfinex. Cash leads Tether, basically is how I read that. Or you can think of it as uh, cash leading fake Tethers. You know, whatever narrative you want to come up with in your head is fine by me. But uh, if we just compare it to 2017, basically that entire rally, Coinbase was leading. Um, you can say there's more retail, there's more FOMO, there's less order book depth, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever. All that stuff is valid. So we were bullish then when Bitfinex had issues with Tether. Things got really wacky a couple times and the Bitfinex premium went way up. Then if we look at 2020, most of that arguably was a Coinbase premium. Some of this is just how TradingView calculates the prices between the exchanges, but uh, in late 2020, early 2021, very obviously a Coinbase premium here and stuff, you know, getting arbed, very volatile, out of whack. Nonetheless, obviously Coinbase is favored here on the premium. So I'm bullish still, right? You can't not be. We're at all time highs. Another week, another all time high. We've not sold off significantly yet. We keep trying and just been unsuccessful. Let's say you're just not sure, right? What does the trend look like on some random trend metrics? Here's Alligator Fractal. It Alligator's three MAs. Fractals are just a way to use levels as entries and exits. And essentially, the Alligator Fractal has been long since October, telling you to relong in December, telling you you're stopped out again uh, earlier in. January and then telling you to relong late January after that Elon expiry candle, whatever you want to call it. And ever since then, you know, it's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> like we had Tesla news that we're just we're melting up over and over and over again. And even if you're not sure about that, zoom in, go to the 12 hour, look at the same metrics. Alligator fractal tells you to be long, tells you your stops are at 44, 46. We tried to stop out last night. It wasn't we're un unsuccessful on that mission. So any higher highs here should be adding to longs just continually. Anytime we breach these green fractals, that's just telling you to add to your long. And breaching the red ones in this case would be a stop out of that trade. So your long from here, stop out here, stop out here, stop out here. That's anything lower than that would be a stop out. Anything above that is an add. So thus far, you're just adding, 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 adding the entire way. And all this nonsense, you're out because the MAs are flipped bearish. So trend is highly favorable here. Uh, even on cloud, this is daily cloud now. Told you go long in October and you're holding this whole time. You're adding twice in January. You're still long. Uh, one problematic thing I'm seeing with BTC and ETH is just volume kind of peaking and then declining again. Uh, so technically this is a bearish divergence here. Higher highs in price on lower volume and lower RSI. So that is something to watch for, certainly. But trend-wise, this looks fine on the cloud. I had a nice little reset, and we're ready to go again. Um, on the four-hour, a few interesting things, much like that 12-hour crisscross on the alligator, you had a dip below the cloud on the four-hour, four hour, back above that now, well above that, 
And the question is, how do we measure what, what's happening here? Is this just an ascending triangle? Which, at the very least, it's that. That has a measured move of 4K. 52 to 54, let's say, most conservative. If we want to measure it as the entire like impulse flag thing, we can say 54 to 58 as far as the range. I'm just using the fibs here. So you fib the high to the low, the high to the low. Or if you say, you know what, this whole thing is a cup and handle of some kind. It's diagonal, it's messy. Let's get as non-conservative as possible. Take this high, this low. That gives us a move between 62 and 70. So the targets just keep moving up if we're moving up, right? Like, I mean, I don't, I don't make up the rules. <laughs> so if we keep moving higher, this is where we're going. And if you're into selling at specific targets on the way up, you know, you could look at all this depending on size, leverage, risk, risk tolerance, all that sort of thing. Uh, you can even be adding, um, if we break down to the key June, but stay above the cloud, stuff like that. But all this collectively looks incredibly bullish still, even on the four hour. We go to the daily, we're still in the pitchfork on the daily, which has a upside target of like 67 max. R4 is at 77. R3 is at 65. So there's still plenty of reasons that we can keep going. And if you just treat the yearly pivots as a ladder, we just climb the rungs over and over again. If the R2 is support, we go to R3. If the R3 is support, we go to R4, right? Like, I mean, it's an all-time high, but it's uh, just trading the indicators as they're meant to be traded. Here's the two-year moving average multiplier. Down here's the 730 MA or the buy zone. And up here is 5X, the 730 MA or the sell zone. And that's above 57 at this point. So just mounting evidence that plenty of reasons to keep going up. And oh, by the way, even if we're above this, historically, we can hold above that for like a month and a half um, so even if we tap 58, that's not even like time to sell for BTC historically on the back testing. Ideally, you're paying very close attention once we do break above the MA multiplier, but then you're definitely selling um, in, on any breakdown below the MA multiplier. So you're essentially just letting that runner run until we break down below that. Uh, switching gears to ETH, the alligator fractal for ETH has even has been even cleaner since October. So you had a crisscross here, you had a crisscross here. Let's say you're you're conservative um, and you are waiting until you get a close above this level and then you're just adding this whole time. You get stopped out here. You're adding again, adding again, adding again, adding again, adding again, right? You're just adding, adding, adding and the stop just keeps moving up. Right now the stop is at 14.50 and this fractal is just telling you to add or told you to add the other day. And you're probably going to get another stop loss at 1700. So this looks even cleaner than the BTC trend does, as far as that's concerned. The one-year MA multiplier, just because there's not enough price history to look at two years, is telling you 2400-ish is going to be the top. Historically, it's been a mixture of cruising above that and tapping it immediately and selling off. So I'm a lot more cautious about this exact level. That I am a BTC because BTC has shown twice in the past that's been able to continue past that. But this is going to violently keep moving up because price has violently moved up over the past year. So it's important to kind of watch this day over day. If we look at ETH's pitchfork, it continues to cruise above the pitchfork. It's between the R3 and the R4. The R4 is at 2300. R5 is at 2600. So ETH overall to me looks much hotter price-wise overbought than BTC does. To me, ETH has less upside than BTC. BTC will drag ETH and ETH will drag BTC to the upside for sure. Um, I just don't think ETH has as much room left on the way up. Sp supports for ETH are 850 and really, you know, the golden zone to rebuy is the, the median line. So anything, anything near this area is a re giant rebuy for me. Uh, if we look at ETH's ascending triangle, it's been a slow, slow grind. It broke out, retested the, the quote-unquote throwback, and then eventually meandered its way back into the measured move and 1618 fib of the high to low here. And each time it sold off, you know, you get a dragonfly here. Last night we had a tweezer bottom here. We just, we keep trying to sell off and we can't. <laughs> we just, we can't break down. So until the market 
tells me otherwise, you gotta just remain bullish. This is probably the most concerning thing I'm seeing on ETH, and another reason why I'm super cautious on any of these positions. This is just a massive rising wedge, and we can have a conversation about that being bullish or bearish, but this is above a 45 degree angle, so... <laughs> Um, uh, the other question is, you know, is this an ascending triangle plus a wedge? I, you know, I don't know, right? But to me, the volume is the most problematic. This has just been a giant bearish divergence, essentially all the way up. So this has room in the wedge to go, but it's hard to be mega bullish on that upside. This thing has already shot above its pitchfork, right? It's already in the danger zone as far as the rate of change here and this is just giant warning flashing signs the only thing not making me bearish is just the inability for us to uh, sell off and then on ETH BTC lots of meandering I don't really trade the pair directly but it's important probably to look at it if you're trading ETH and BTC together so I don't think it's um, bullish or bearish one way or the other it just isn't definitely bullish right like to me it's it's just back in the range back between this vpvr support resistance back below this yearly pivot we may get a retap of 03 before 05 you know i don't i don't have a good read on this and if you want to see how i'm trading the ethan btc pairs or want to counter trade me or want to copy trade me any of that stuff you can visit enzyme.finance and take a look at the techme capital holistic eth btc fund which is currently in 100% uh, BTC. And as you can see, I'm trading how exactly I discuss these weekly videos. So let me know if you have any comments below, and happy trading.